Hello, my name is Mitchell. I'm going to be showing you how to set up and program your Campbell Scientific Data Logger. For this demonstration, we're going to be using a CR800, and therefore we will need a 12-volt power supply and a USB to serial cable. Some data loggers, such as the CR300, have a direct USB port, and they can be powered directly from the USB. So we're going to be using PC400. You can also be using PC200W, which will be pretty much the same. So we'll go ahead and start up our PC400. And first we're going to click on Add Data Logger. And then we'll hit Next once. And then we'll find our data logger from the list. We're using a CR800. And we can name this to anything we want. So we'll call it a CR800 Demo. And then we'll hit next again. And we have a direct connection to it. We need to change the COM port to USB to serial COM port because of the cable that we are using. If you have a direct USB connection, it will instead say USB serial device. And then we'll hit next. The only thing on this page you may need to change is the pack bus address especially if you have more than one data logger. If that is the case, then you can change the pack bus address in the device configuration. You can click next on this page and on this page. And then we are going to test to make sure we can communicate to the data logger. And that was successful. So we can hit next one more time. On this page, we can adjust the clock on the data logger. As you can see here, it is uh, desynchronized from the computer time. So if we click on set data logger clock, that time on the data logger will be updated to match the computer. And then we hit next. On this page, we could select and send a program to the data logger, but we are going to be doing that in a minute. So we'll hit next and then finish. And yes, we want to stay connected. And now we need to make our program for the data logger. So we are going to go up and click on shortcut, the red circle button. And if you already have a program, you can open it here. Um, but we are going to make a new program. And again, we need to select our data logger from the list and set the scan interval. The scan interval is how frequently the data logger measures the sensors but that data is not necessarily stored. We will get to that in the next a couple steps. Now on the sensors page, we need to add the sensors that we are connecting to the data logger. And in the list, we have all of the available Campbell Scientific sensors. We are using two sensors. We have a type T thermocouple for measuring temperature and also a CS700 rain gauge. So we're going to open up temperature and find the type T thermocouple and then we're going to hit this blue arrow to add it. This will pop up and we can um, select degrees Fahrenheit and nothing else on this page needs to be changed. And so we can hit OK. And then we need to go back up and find our rain gauge, which will be under meteorological and precipitation. There it is, so we'll hit add. And this rain gauge measures in inches, so we need to select that and then hit OK. And there we have our two sensors. If you need to make any changes to them, you can hit the Edit button down here, which will pop that window back up. And so now we can go to the Outputs page, where we can configure what data will actually be saved to the logger. The data is organized into tables. And so on our first table, we can name it anything we want. We'll call it sensors. And we want the data to be saved every 10 minutes. Or no, we'll make it five minutes. And then on the left side, we have our available measurements. So we have this type T thermocouple, and in the middle are all of the different ways we have to save that data to the table. So what that means is that the data logger will read the temperature from that sensor every 10 seconds. And then after five minutes, it will store the average temperature over that time. So click on average. And again, we can rename that measurement to anything we want to.
And then we also need to add our rain gauge. So we'll click on that and hit total, which is the only option. And so in the table, we have our two measurements, the average temperature and total rainfall. There is always a second table, which you can remove if you feel so inclined. And the second table contains the battery level. So you can see once every 1440 minutes or once every day, it will record the minimum, the minimum battery voltage. So you can see if your battery is beginning to fail. So now that we have our table set up, we can click on finish here and we can save this program anywhere on our computer. For the sake of simplicity, we'll save it to our desktop. We'll call it CR800 demonstration and then hit save. And now that that is done, it will ask us if we want to send it to the data logger. We have our data logger connected, so we can go ahead and do that now. So we'll hit yes, and then yes again. And you may need to change these options a little, depending on what you're doing. Uh, we are going to delete the previous tables and then hit send. Now that is sending the program to the data logger. and we can hit OK. And lastly, before we close, we can click on the wiring diagram, which will show us how we need to plug these sensors into the data logger. Because if the sensors are not plugged into the correct ports, they will not be recorded. So once we set those up, our data logger will uh, be up and running. And then we can close that and disconnect from our data logger and our data logger is set to be deployed. In the next video, we will show you how to retrieve data from your data logger. So I hope that has been helpful for you and feel free to visit our website at inmtn.com. Thanks.